Remember, this video is part of a video sequence converging the high simulation of the chemical distribution in toluene's hydroxylation to produce benzene. A link is available below. Continuing working with this block flow diagrams, after adding the reactor, what we're going to do is focus on the feed. So we're going to add that mixer 1 and mixer 2 and connect the fresh feed. These mixers will later be connected to the recycle that we're going to work uh, in future videos. We're going to add a mixer. You can come here to all. You have options of adding mixer or a splitter, also known as a T. I'm going to click mixer 1. I'm going to double click mixer 1. I'm going to use my nomenclature from my plan, which is the block flow diagram. I will be adding the hydrogen feed. Notice how the stream is created for you. And then that will be connected to S1 that is already in the PFD. Notice that, notice that um, S1, if I come here, it's specified. This is very important because HiSys works from inputs to outputs. Knowing what you specify will have an impact on, on what we optimize right later because we can only optimize or we can only manipulate right in the x axis is if we're going to do a, a case study or, or some study uh, variables that we input anything that is calculated for us can be in the dependent uh, variable or, or the y axis so th this is important anyways um i'm not going to be worrying right now about the temperature of hydrogen uh, in the feed I know that right now what I have is everything at the same conditions as the, as the reactor. I know that this is not real yet, but remember that we're only worrying right now about the distribution of chemicals or the material balances in the PFD and not the heat balance balances. We will get that, uh, we will do that later, especially because it is good to add temperature and pressure changers if you have if you create case studies to understand the behavior of the streams in the process and then with that specifications right you can then specify the different temperature and pressure changers we will also add the recycle later we're going to converge things from left to right and then slowly add the recycle it's going to take us a couple of uh, videos right to get there but we will do it okay so Let's, let's, let's specify this again. I recommend you right, right now to uh, delete this and, or maybe take a print screen of this so you can save it. So what we're going to do is instead of allowing S minus or S1 to be in, uh, user added, we're going to make H2 user added because the way uh, HiSys works is that it converges from left to right. So, but there's some equipments or units or icons that can do reverse calculations. But once again, we want to make sure that if we want to, if we want to control the amount of H2 feed coming after we add the recycle, we need to have that variable user specify. This is just mathematics. There's no significant impact on the simulation you will see that because the numbers are the same in the solver the memory of the solver solver we already have the values close close enough to the numbers that we converge so the temperature was 1268 the pressure was 496 and we added the mass flow which was 100 so what i'm gonna do is instead of adding the mass i just want you to see that you can also converge this with moles, okay? There's no difference, right? Automatically then the mass flow will be calculated for us. So make sure that you have this in terms of molar flow for now um, and continue with me. Now I'm gonna do the same for the mixer number two. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker here. Now I'm gonna come to the worksheet and do exactly the same thing. Remember that here I added the same temperature, 1268 uh, Fahrenheit, 469 uh, pressure, and instead of adding 100 pound mole uh, pound uh, per hour, I am adding the pound mole per hour. Save it. Now that we have the reactor converged and we have the 
a feed of hydrogen and toluene coming into the reactor with the mixer connected. Now we need to really calculate how much of the, or of the reactants do we need. Right now we're assuming a mass uh, base for the calculations of 100 moles that's the, uh, per hour. That's the last number that we added. But we really need to get that number correct in order for us to have the whole capacity of the plant. So from the statement, it tells us that the target production rate is 200 mm pounds per year. That translates to 200 million pounds per year. This is a common engineering nomenclature that you can find on uh, engineering uh, papers and a scope of works. They also tell us that the operating factor is around 0.904, a common value in the industry to take scheduled downtime. So let me explore what that means and show you quickly the calculation. The operating factor is one of the factors that has a major effect on the profits, basically because it takes into consideration a fraction of time a process is in operation. Any time that a plant is not producing a product, it is also not producing revenue. Downtime in production is separated into two different categories, plan and on plan. However, plans, right, are scheduled and budgeted stops during the production, such as scheduled maintenance and product changeover. On plan events, though, occur when equipment that is scheduled to be in operation has an unexpected event, such as an equipment failures or running out of material occurs. You may have ma machine jams. You may have parts failures. You also can have water and oil leaks, and, uh, and you may have inadequate maintenance, right? So we typically plan maintenance to avoid the own plan, like the ones that I mentioned. But also, you may have some maintenance that wasn't performed correctly, therefore making the plan to stop. So based on a study from the Basin Born Research, uh, Research Group, 82% of the companies have experienced at least one planned downtime outage over the past three years. The average number is around two. Two million dollars have been lost due to this, right? Based on the Aberdeen Independent Research of, of Unplanned Downtime costing companies around 250K per hour. 70% of companies lack complete awareness of when equipment assets are due for maintenance or upgrades. Zero, uh, zero unplanned downtime is now the number one priority or high priority for 72 of the organization that were researched. So this means that field service management is directly tackling the problem of unplanned downtime with uh, with uh, latest digital capabilities shifting service maintenance and downtime from reactive to predictive. So you can imagine here people working in, in process control, people working with machine learning, artificial intelligence, things that can give us, analyze the data and can help us to predict when this downtime comes. As you can see, it is, has a big impact on the profit and the cost associated for the plant. So tangible costs related to downtime, this is what we want to tackle, right? You, you may have loss of production, loss of capacity, uh, because you're not producing more uh, what you're expecting or the, the process is designed. You may be uh, impacting the direct labor and, and particularly the cost uh, of labor. And you can also be impacting the cost of uh, keeping inventory in the plant. So to do that, what we to take into consideration that time that the plant will be down, some scope of work have some this operating factor so the operating factor is just um, you know, a design spec that we use at the early stages of the design to take into consideration the scale down of the process. Good companies always takes into consideration an operating factor. The ranges depends right on the company. So a very common number is around 90.4% or so, but companies might are considered to have some downtime. So in this particular case, as you can see, the original scale of the process is reduced to 100.8 million pounds per year. So this means that the cost of production of, of doing the plan downtime is around 19.2 million pounds per year. This will impact directly the revenue, but it's closer to the real scenario. And you also, you're not overestimating the size and the capa the size of the plan. Remember that if you're processing more flow in the design, the equipment will be uh, bigger, you know, the uh, pipelines, that name, they may be bigger. So everything is affected by the scale. The lesson here is that operating factor decreases the plant production capacity, therefore impacting negatively the yearly revenues. So all of this introduction is for us to get this new number for the benzene production. So in the upcoming videos, what we're going to do is using some mathematical manipula manipulators in the process synthesis. And I, I will show you how to set uh, that information in the process flow diagram.